Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'll explain how you can remotely control some O-Ray products like this HDMI matrix in front of me over your network through a simple IP connection by accessing the embedded web interface. Through that interface, you can make a wide range of configuration choices, including EDID settings, resolution for the video, and even input and output relationships. And to access that web interface, you'll simply plug this into your computer directly or to your network, open up a standard browser, and point your browser at 192.168.1.100, and that will open up the interface, and you can simply log in and have access to all of the adjustment parameters. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll show you how to make that connection, and I'll actually walk you through some of the menus for this HDMI matrix I have in front of me. This is the UHD48, dash EX230-K, and it's typical of the interface you'll find on a lot of the O-Ray products. If somehow the IP address of the device has been changed or you don't remember it, you can recover it through the RS-232 connection. To do this, you'll need to connect a computer to the RS-232 port on the back of the matrix so you can retrieve the IP information. First, you'll need a cable to make the physical connection. The O-Ray kit includes a cable with a 3-pin connector on one end and a DB9 serial connection on the other. If your computer doesn't provide a companion DB9 connection, you can purchase a DB9 to USB-A connection that will allow you to connect through any USB-A port on your computer. Once you have made this physical connection and have powered on your computer and the matrix, you'll have to figure out which COM port your computer is using for the connection. To do this on a PC, first search for Device Manager and open that window. Scroll down to the section labeled Ports and expand this to see the active COM ports. In this particular example, COM4 is active. Next, you'll have to use a serial terminal program to communicate with the matrix. A free and easy one to use is called PuTTY and it works great. Open this program and adjust the configuration settings as listed in the example and then tap the Open button. This will bring up a terminal window that you can use to retrieve the IP information. Simply enter the command R space IP config exclamation point and the matrix will respond with the information you'll need to connect over the IP network. When you first connect to the matrix, you'll start on the status tab that provides a lot of good information on the current state of the matrix. You'll be able to see the model number, current firmware version, host name, and network connection settings. These network parameters can be modified on the network tab if needed, and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. The video tab allows you to digitally redirect any of the four input devices to any of the outputs for the product. Initially, these are connected in a one-to-one -one fashion with input number one to output number one and so on. To change these, simply tap the input you'd like to change below the input number and that input will be sent to the output you choose. You can also create and save custom presets to make setup easier in the future. The product provides for four presets and you can name them anything you like. Simply adjust the input and output settings as desired and then enter a preset name you'll remember. Next, tap the Preset Save to have the system remember the preset. You can also tap the Presets Clear button to clear any existing presets if needed. The next tab down is the Input tab, which provides an indication of which input connections are currently active, as well as each input's EDID settings. The EDID settings allow you to adjust the audio settings to match your media and devices. You can simply select the correct setting from the drop-down menu for each input to make the change. This page also allows you to upload previous EDID settings you've saved or download the current settings to your computer to make the process easier in the future. The Output tab provides an overview of the current connections for your devices. It shows you the status for both the HDMI and network connection for each of the four inputs. This confirms that you have a valid connection to either a monitor connected to the switch locally through HDMI or remotely through a LAN cable. You also have the option of adjusting the scaling of the media output if you're using different resolution monitors. 
Finally, you can enable and disable the media streams for each of the four inputs from this tab by simply turning them on or off. This particular matrix is CEC compatible and the CEC tab allows you to remotely control the playback of the media content for both the input and the output. You can simply tap the control you'd like to use just as if you were using a physical remote. This level of control through this network connection provides complete flexibility in how your media is distributed. The Network tab is where you can make adjustments to the connection information for the matrix. You have a choice of setting a specific network address or using DHCP to select it for you automatically if your network allows for this. If you choose to specify a network address for the matrix, first turn off the DHCP option. You can then adjust the product's network address on the LAN, including the subnet and gateway to a specific setting. This screen also allows you to change the default passwords for both the user and admin to ensure secure access. If you change these settings, make sure to tap the Save button to apply them to the matrix. You can also reset all of the network parameters to their factory defaults by simply tapping the Set Network Defaults button. The System tab section provides some general control over the matrix. On this screen, you can lock the front panel to prevent someone from accidentally hitting a button. You can also toggle the beep the matrix makes when first powered on. You have a choice on setting the board rate for the serial connection on the matrix. This tab is also where you can apply new firmware to the matrix when needed by locating the firmware file on the network and simply applying it. Finally, you can perform a complete factory reset or reboot the matrix by tapping either one of those buttons. I hope you found this overview helpful, and accessing the web interface that's embedded in a lot of the O-Ray products is incredibly easy. You'll simply add that product to your network or connect it directly to a computer, open up a standard browser, and point your browser at 192.168.1.100, and you'll have to log into the interface, and you'll have complete access to all of the configuration settings. You can also access it through a direct RS-232 connection if you choose to do that, but that would be more of a command line instruction as opposed to a web interface, which I think is a whole lot easier. So hopefully you found this review helpful, and until next time, as always, thanks for watching.